got him. That's a good one too. That is a good fish right there, boys and girls. Got him. Nice. Man, am I excited about this video because we are talking about frog fishing. It is my absolute favorite way to catch fish, but it wasn't always my favorite. In fact, I used to not really frog fish at all because it was super frustrating and I just really didn't either get bites or when I did, I didn't land them. There's five things that you need to know or need to do to really improve your frog fishing game and quite honestly just catching and landing fish on the frog. We're gonna talk about them today in this video. So what's going on guys? My name is Jeremy Francis. I run the channel and the page called Fishing and Lone Star here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook. You can find me there. But today we're right here on the Monster Bass channel talking about frog fishing, all right? Now, again, as I mentioned, there's five things that I think are extremely important about what to do or what to have to improve your frog fishing hookup ratio and to make frog fishing a blast. So let's first talk about those. And I will say the last one is probably the most controversial. Controversial, controversial. So easy for you to say. We're gonna save that one for last and I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback on it. But first, let's talk about the frog itself. And there's two main types I like to use and I'll show you those now. All right, so I pulled this frog right off the deck of my boat, my frog and rod, and that is uh, really a popping slash walking frog, all right? You'll see the cupped lip here, um, and, and it does walk really well with that killed belly. Uh, this is actually the Blitz Lures popping frog, and I'm not so much talking about the brands of frogs today as I am the types of frogs, right? So a lot of times people look for either a walking frog or a popping frog, uh, quite honestly, this one does a little bit of both, all right? This one does both walking uh, with that killed belly. It will switch side to side really well. It also pops and spits really well. I love the uh, kind of this concave back right here. Really helps when a fish bites this, creates force on those hooks. Um, but I almost always use this frog or a particular type. Another one is the KVD Pop and Perch. You'll see this one also has a uh, cupped mouth. It also walks really well. Um, one thing that both these have is they're super soft. Um, I personally don't think you should ever have to boil a frog or, or manipulate a frog to make it great. Just go buy a great frog to begin with. And uh, softness is key. Now, you'll notice the big stout hooks. That's also key. Um, but I think the softness uh, really goes a long ways. So I'll throw the popping and the walking frog almost 90, 95% of the time. The only time I don't is if I'm ever fishing heavy pads or just really thick vegetation where I don't have room to really walk. And in that particular case, uh, I will throw just what I call just kind of a normal hollow body frog. Now this one, some people call it kind of a, walk, a walking frog as well. They'll walk a little bit. Um, this one's the KVD, I think it's called the Sexy Frog. This one's a Castaic uh, Frog. Both of them, again, super soft, all right? Great hooks, um, but both of these I'll throw in and around lily pads or really thick vegetation, but if there's any gaps uh, or any holes at all in the cover, I'm throwing the Popping Frog or the Walking Frog. Now the colors really quickly that I'll throw, I keep this super simple. I only carry three. Um, I usually will throw a white, a brown or black, okay, or a yellow and green. Brown and black is kind of low light situations. White is what I predominantly throw, but I will throw green in stained water or around the spawn. Fish hate this color around the spawn, so I will throw those, but those are kind of the main three colors. A little bit of a yellow or maybe kind of like a, a blue gillish color. Uh, white and a black or brown. I don't really think you need much else. Those are the three that I carry. Now, before I get too far in this video, I do want to show you that these seven frogs, I'll step aside and show you, but these seven frogs, that's it. That's actually all that I carry in my boat or in my frog box. I don't need any more frogs than that. Those frogs do it for me. Uh, sure, can I go buy more? Have I bought more? Yes, I've given them all away because these are the ones that work for me. So I don't really think you need a ton of frogs. 
What you do need though is the right gear and the right equipment. So let's talk about that now. All right, so the first thing that you must have is a great frog, all right? So we covered that. Second thing you must have is a heavy rod, all right? You, you're, you can throw a medium heavy, but I'm telling you, a heavy or an extra heavy rod is really what you're going to use and you're gonna really want it to, to have because of the big hooks that are on these frogs, all right? Uh, these frogs, uh, any type of frog usually has some really thick, heavy gauge hooks. In order to really uh, get those hooks into a fish's mouth, you need a heavy rod. And the way you're going to do that and really drive the hook home is with a heavy or an extra heavy rod. This is actually a 7.4 extra heavy that I use. Um, it's actually a moderate action though. So it gives me really good casting distance, really accurate cast, but the extra heavy pulls through the power, really drives those hooks home. So the second thing you must have is a heavy or extra heavy rod. Trust me, don't skimp on that. You're gonna be super frustrated when you get a fish to bite, you get it halfway to the boat and the hook pops out of its mouth. I've seen it happen time and time again, go with a heavy or extra heavy rod. So sticking with the gear, I don't think it's a must have per se, but you want a, a reel that's got a pretty good drag to it. Um, I usually throw uh, an 8.3 8 to 1 or 7.5 to 1, but a pretty fast uh, reel. The reel speed doesn't really matter because you're meaning like the slowness because you're working the, the frog with the rod. All right. The main thing you need the fast reel for is to really pick up um, uh, uh, line and get that fish to the boat and out of thick, heavy cover as quickly as you can. So a faster reel is better. It's not the must have. The must have though is you need braid. All right. Again, to drive in those thick hooks, you really want to have some really good braid. I use Vicious Fishing, their braid. This is 50 to 60 pound, uh, sorry, it's 50 pound fluorocarbon, but you can go up to like 60 or 65. Uh, 50 is enough for me. Now, if I was fishing down in, say, Florida, Okeechobee, any of those types of like really thick, heavy vegetation areas, I would absolutely step up to 60 or 65 pound braid. The beautiful thing about braid, though, when you're fishing a frog, which is usually around a lot of vegetation, is that the braid is going to cut through it and help you get the fish out of that thick stuff. So you need a great frog. You need a heavier, extra heavy rod and you need braid. Now let's talk about the next couple of things that are must do's or must haves as we wrap up this video. Okay, the fourth thing that is more of a must do is you must be able to work a frog really well. Now, what I really like again about these particular frogs here, kind of the popping and the walking style is you can twitch them and they'll, they'll literally just go back and forth in the water kind of in place and you keep that frog in the strike zone. So having the right frog with the right cadence or retrieve really helps you keep the frog where you want it to be versus if you have a frog that doesn't really work side to side very well, as you're twitching it or walking it, if it's moving forward a lot, you're gonna, and let's say you're trying to hit a hole and vegetation is about this big, you're only gonna get about two twitches before the frog has left that vicinity, as opposed to the right frog, when you twitch it the right way, it will walk right there in place three, four, five, six times in that same circular area and leaving you more opportunity to get a bite or get a reaction strike from the fish, right? So how do you retrieve that? For me, I'll show you a clip here, but I'm usually working a twitch, reel in the slack, twitch, twitch, reel in the slack, twitch, reel in the slack, twitch, twitch, reel in the slack. Obviously you can go twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, 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 pause, twitch, pause, and on the pauses, make sure you're reeling in your slack. It's super important that you're working the frog with the rod, you're not working the frog with the reel, all right? So any type of motion that you're imparting on that frog, it is because of your rod. And one good thing that you wanna make sure you do is try to have that rod hit your forearm right here as you're working it, whether you're right or left-handed. Doing so is gonna make sure you get the right action that you're doing, and you wanna be able to uh, pop, the, pop the rod that hard so that your frog is walking or popping that way as well, all right? So, Twitch is right there on your forearm. Twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. And as you get better with the cadence, it'll get more normal. So as you twitch, whenever you go back, you're reeling in your slack and you'll, you'll get to the point where you're able to do that cadence very quickly. But the right cadence and the right retrieve makes all the difference in the world as you're fishing a frog. It's gonna take time on the water. It's gonna take practice, but 
Focus on doing that with the right frog in the right area, and you're gonna have a ton of big blowups. All right, so speaking of big blowups, this leads us to the fifth must do or must have and this one is the right hook set, all right? Now, I'm telling you, this one's gonna be debated. Uh, I've seen this over and over again. I've actually seen, uh, I guess you could say, somewhat of a scientific video of a frog coming up and, and eating, I'm sorry, a fish coming up and eating a frog. And in doing so, what, what's interesting is when the fish bites the frog, they normally turn back down and go to swim. They don't immediately like grab it, like, oh, wait a second, this tastes kind of funny, let me spit it back out. Fish don't really do that. They're either gonna get the frog and turn and swim back down, or they're gonna miss it entirely. All right, so you hear some people say, as soon as the fish hits, you set the hook as fast as you can. I adamantly disagree with that. I don't care who's saying it. I don't care if it's KBD that says it, I will tell him that he's wrong, because I've seen it over and over and over. I've had tons of experience myself doing it, and I've actually seen, like I said, some highly scientific videos. A fish will bite the frog, They'll turn and go down, giving you plenty of time to point your rod back at the fish, reel down your slack, and set the hook. It's about long enough to where, let's just say, for example, the fish hits your frog for you to go, oh, that's a good one. Reel down, set the hook. So you're talking like maybe a second or two, but immediate hook set, I don't really think that's the right thing. You'll improve your hookup ratio, you will catch more frogfish, if you wait about a second or two, point your rod down, reel in your slack, big hook set over your shoulder, and you'll stick more fish and land more fish on the frog. All right, so quick recap. The right frog, I use a walking or popping frog unless I'm around pads and I go with just a straight frog. Uh, you need a heavy rod, heavy or extra heavy. Braid is a must have as well. The other thing is you need the right cadence and how you're walking the frog, and last, you need the right hook set. You put all those together and you're gonna have a great time on the water frog fishing. If you're new to it, give it some time, throw the frog around vegetation, throw it in the spring, throw it in the summer. You're gonna catch a lot of fish and you'll have a blast doing it. It is some of the most exhilarating moments of bass fishing, catching fish on a topwater frog. And let me know, let me know if you disagree with the hook set. Uh, I'm gonna argue with you, I'll just go ahead and tell you. Uh, but go ahead and let me know if you disagree. We can uh, have a polite combative conversation in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe right here to the Monster Bass channel. We're bringing you a ton of videos to help you go out and catch more fish, have more success on the water, and hopefully help you catch your PB. So make sure you subscribe right here to Monster Bass. We'll see you on the next one.